I've been playing outdoors since I was a kid. Standing by the front door at around two years old, hollering, side, 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 trying to get my mom to let me go play outside. Now, after 30 plus years working in the outdoor business, I'm dropping insider conversations every week with the brand leaders, guides, marketers, CEOs, and others to make the outdoor industry a trillion dollar juggernaut that drives product innovation, revenue, and public policy for everything outdoors. I'm Rick Says. Welcome to the Outdoor Biz Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 447 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, brought to you this week by Thrive Market. Today I'm talking with Corey Higgins. Corey is the Jetty co-founder and chief commercial officer. He says one of his early memories of Jetty is putting $200 in a trucker hat at Germ's apartment by the porthole to pay his portion of starting the company and making their first three T's. They've come a long way since then. Welcome to the show, Corey. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be a, a fun conversation. I haven't I've never worked in the surf side of the world. I've always worked in the outdoor side of the world, adventure travel. So I'm always looking to learn. And I've, we were just talking. I never made my way to the Surf Expo show. I'm kind of disappointed in that. That looked like a, always a fun show. Yeah, it is. It really is a fun show. And it's so much more than surf. Yeah. It kind of changes seasonally. Like the the January show has more surf, surf hard goods. But then the September show has... A big boat section, a lot of wakeboard stuff, kayak yeah. stuff, and a paddle. So there's a whole whole kind of section of it called Blue Water that's it's not surf driven at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so is it more? Always, of a, it's more of a water sports thing. Yeah, water sports, and we always the, the whole thing like it's the surf. The only difference between the coastline and inland is the is the salinity in the water like yeah. everybody's doing the same activities whether yeah. you're surfing in the ocean or surfing behind a boat or on a river yeah. kayaking pa- stand up paddling hiking fishing you're just in salt water or fresh water like it's all the same stuff right right yeah pretty cool you know, yeah. what we call a coastal outdoor lifestyle um, <laughs> i love it it doesn't really matter which coast it is that's right that's right the coast on the lake or the coast at the beach <laughs> <laughs> That's yep. pretty cool. I was looking yeah. at your, your uh, website too. Your products are pretty cool, man. Awesome. You guys are doing pretty cool stuff. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's been 21 years of of evolution and, and figuring it out and kind of, yeah. Yeah. you know, learning from mistakes. That's it. That's it. Yeah. You don't learn unless you're making mistakes. That's what I always feel. No, it's true. <laughs> yeah. And not being too proud to ask questions. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So what was your very first outdoor adventure? Was it water related? I mean, the first outdoor adventure I could, I think of would be like camping trips with like the Boy Scouts and my dad and, you know, that, yeah. that sort of thing as like a kid. Yeah. And then I grew up at the beach in New Jersey on Long Beach Island and, and summertime was just, you were, you spent your entire life at the beach. So wow. every day it was an outdoor adventure somewhere exploring the jetties or the dunes or doing something, but just always being outside. And then, uh, and then it just, after college, spent a month in Costa Rica, just mm. cruising around, figuring it out. And then lots more backpacking and cruising around Europe and Australia, you know, my early twenties. So, yeah, I mean, there's so many memories of, of outdoor adventures. Right, right, right. Was the first one as a kid though? The youngest you go way back as a kid? Yeah. I'd say yeah. The, the first stuff would be camping trips as like a young kid in like yeah, the Boy Scouts yeah. or my, my parents. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Those of us that had parents took us camping, I think they did us a huge favor. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no doubt. It sparks that bug in a lot of people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I read the Jetty story that begins with five friends on a strike mission to the mountains. First of all, how did those five friends become friends? Was it was it neighborhood buddies? High school. High school. Yeah, it was all high school. We were we were friends in high school just from whatever. That was just the circle of friends that we fell into. And yeah, we all went to college and, and stayed in touch, visited each other. And and after college, we were sitting around, we were working our nine to fives. And on the weekends, we, we'd gather at the one guy's apartment and, and crack some beers and talk about starting a business and working for ourselves someday and yeah. and what that looked like. And so every week we would kind of come back with what kind of industry, what kind of products, and we just narrow in the names for the brands, logo, mm-hmm. like all that kind of stuff. And we, we got to kind of narrow down where it was the surf industry and um, clothing and, and, and narrow it and pick the name. And then, 
And then we just kind of like sat on it for a minute. And I did some, I did some of that backpacking in Australia. Mm-hmm. And when I came back from that three month trip, that's when we kind of like threw that money in the hat and started making some t-shirts. Cool. Oh, but the strike mission was over the winter right before my cool. Australia trip where we, we went up to Vermont to Mount Snow. And we, okay. Yeah. Yeah. About five and a half hour car ride of talking about the company and then lift lines, lodge bars, just right, right. the whole two, three day strike mission for some snow. <laughs> we just talked about the business. That's cool. And you guys, are they still, is all five guys still part of the company? Me and, and one of the other guys, our CEO, we're the two founders that are still involved. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, that's not true. One of the founders who left early on due to not wanting to max out his credit card again. He did a real and, job. <laughs> yeah, like him, him and his wife wanting to start a family and, and get a home. That kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, adult stuff. He bailed and we took his debt and absorbed his debt mm-hmm. as taking his equity. And that was the trade. And then he went, he was a, he was a tenured history teacher at high school. And then one year he hit us up and was like, he loves screen printing. That was like his big, his passion. And he's like, can I take a sabbatical from school and come run your screen printing department? So he did that for a year and it was so successful that we were able to offer him a full-time job. And his wife had the benefits from teaching as well. So he didn't need that. So he quit teaching and came back and now he runs our screen printing operation. Wow, that's very cool. Yeah, but the that's other two a, guys that, that left, we're all still friends. No one's, yeah. there's no bad blood. It wasn't, it wasn't anything negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome to have friends like that. I just got back from a camping trip with five buddies that I've known since first grade through high school. One of them since first grade. Yeah, wow. we get together and do, we didn't start a business, obviously, but it's just, it's just like your brothers, right? I mean, you just as soon as you see them, it's like you never didn't see them. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's easy stuff. Yeah, very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So Snow Mountain, so the mission was to uh, go for some skiing. Did you guys get out on those strike missions a lot? Did you go to other places to ski or did you go surfing together? Oh, you must have did everything together, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. And strike missions are just, I mean, especially the East Coast, Northeast, like if you don't, if you're not getting snow, then it can be pretty brutal conditions with. Um, right. Sea. Icy, right. Yeah. Wind. Yeah. yeah. Real crunchy, windy. Yeah. So you just kind of pay attention to those storms and, uh, and you get a storm and, and, and you see that snow coming and you just get in front of it. And we had friends had houses up, up in Vermont. So we mm. would have places to crash and, uh, and yeah, as, as often as possible, get, get, <laughs> get fresh snow. Right. right. Same um, thing with surf. Same thing yeah, with surf. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a hat involved. Tell us about the hat. I honestly don't know what the hat, like, I don't, we don't still have the hat. I just oh, know, okay. it was, I just know it was a trucker hat and I, and I know the apartment and the coffee table and, <laughs> and, and, and I know it was 200 bucks each, a thousand bucks total. Wow. Um, and three, yeah, we had three t-shirt styles that we designed and printed and a couple of local friends like that own surf shops, two different families that I, I was friends with. They agreed to sell the shirts and, and it just kind of snowballed from there. Very cool. So the first sale was local then. Yeah. The distribution yeah. strategy was like two of my <laughs> friends agreed to, to put them in the stores. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know what? A lot of businesses start like that. I mean, you have to do it that way. Otherwise it, you just banging heads on people, doors of people you don't know. It's really, it's harder that way. If you have friends or you have neighbors or whatever to give you a leg up, it's kind of like a fast track. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a lot of this world, right? Nepotism. Who, who do you know? Yeah, yeah. Start with your friends first. If you can't sell your friends, you can't sell anybody, right? Yes, very true. <laughs> friends yes. and families, right? So and we bartended too. We we always joke that we kind of built the company on bartending. <laughs> yeah. Our CEO and me would both be working behind the bar, talking about in the summertime. We have a big influx of uh, tourists, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. we'd just be talking about the company and selling T-shirts and hats and promoting it. And then all those tourists would then go back to their hometowns in the winter with a new t-shirt or hat. And then they would talk it up for us to their hometowns. Mm -hmm. It just kind of kept growing like that. Snowball. Did you sell them in the bar? Yeah. There was occasions where I would, I would come in with a backdoor it, (laughs) a couple boxes of stuff. And then the staff, the the servers or the the kitchen guys, or um, I'd sell shirts to whoever was around. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Any warm real body, supportive, uh, real supportive 
friends that own the bars that always wanted to help us succeed too. So gotcha, gotcha. Are the bars still there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Those you, are, you want to uh, share the names? One. You want to share the names of the bars? Oh uh, well, the Seashell Beach Club is where uh. I work, and then uh, Jeremy, our CEO, worked at a few different places. He worked at Tucker's. He worked at Cubell's. He bounced around a little bit. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool. Yeah, we got to give them some love. Yeah, yeah. No, their family. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So when did you decide to become a certified B Corp? Was that an early on thing or come later? So we, the surf industry has a, well, used to have an annual summit meeting that was held in Cabo mm. and uh, SEMA, the surf industry manufacturer, oh, members right. association, right. which I actually, I sit on the board of directors on that. First, actually first East Coast person in the history of the surf industry to sit on the board. Oh, wow. Um, Congrats. It, cool. Which is pretty crazy, actually. But it is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, we're the first ones to really do what we've done from the East coast. It's pretty wild. Huh. Um, so anyway, we had this summit meeting in Cabo and one of the speakers was this guy, Afdel Aziz. And this is probably going back. She's must be eight, seven, eight years at this point. Okay. And I didn't know he was a speaker. I didn't know anything about him. I, I sat down next to him at one of the tables having dinner and I uh, got introduced to him and told him my story. And uh, he was like, you should look into be, becoming a B Corp. And so mm-hmm. I learned a little bit about it. And he, he's, he was one of the amazing speaker. He actually changed his, his, his presentation that, that night and, and incorporated our, a little bit of our story. Into oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. He wrote a really cool book called uh, Good is the New Cool, oh, okay. uh, which I thought was a really, really great message. Okay. Yeah. He, he turned me on to it. Then I came home, did some research sent it to the crew and said, Hey, I, I think we should explore this. And then, yeah, we did the onboarding and, and we, we got our points were high enough to get it certified. And mm. yeah, at that point there was only like Patagonia would maybe was the only other. Yeah. I was going to say back then there were probably not very many. Now there's quite a few, but yeah. Yeah. I think there was only like two or 3000 in the world when we, when we got certified. Wow. Mm. And uh, yeah, now it's like, there's tons, which is great. Yeah. I mean, it's, great. it's, it's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Positive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a great program. Yeah. And so what, let's see, what makes Jetty unique from similar lifestyle brands, products like that? Are you, you're not the only surf lifestyle brand. I'm sure there's a bunch, but what sets you apart? Um, It's probably the biggest differentiator is, is our story and our geographic location. So There was just, when we started the company, I mean, we just felt like there wasn't anyone who was speaking to the Northeast. Like we have, Mm -hmm. we have fickle seasons and uh, and really harsh environment. Short seasons, right? Yeah. Short seasons. We have four distinct seasons and, and the weather changes drastically and you need different product for different conditions. And everything that we saw out there in our space was, um, was like palm trees and like, (laughs) sunshine and you know what I mean? And just yeah, Hawaii, Hawaii, Florida. Yeah. 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 yeah Hawaii, Florida, Southern California. And yeah, mm-hmm. the surf industry is based in Southern California. And it just, it wasn't, we weren't feeling it. We just said there's, we just have a different vibe and story in the Northeast. So we started right. creating product around that. And that's really been the, the, the big differentiator, our, our, our style of product and, and color palette and story is just, um, very unique compared to the others mm-hmm. in our space. You probably do more, I don't want to call it winter wear, but more warm weather, long sleeve stuff than some of these other brands, right? Because you needed it back there. Yeah. Our flannel program is mm. insane. Our flannels and sweaters are some of the best sellers we have. It's really good uh, program. We do a lot of lined flannels and uh, polar fleece. And mm-hmm. that's, that stuff is uh, definitely one of the bigger, stronger categories for us. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. What challenges did you face in the early stages of launching Jetty? I mean, sales are always tough, but was it tough to find people to make stuff, make gear production? Uh, well, at the very early stages was like, we were screen printing ourselves in our, our one partner's parents garage. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was mostly just tees, sweatshirts, long sleeves. We get some hats embroidered, but we weren't really doing much more than that. It was, it was Mm -hmm. started with stuff that we could control. So we didn't really have a big inventory, extra inventory problem. We, we sold out mostly Mm -hmm. stuff we had. Yeah. A little bit left over here and there, but, Mm -hmm. and we were working out of our, 
garages, our parents' garages, our spare bedrooms, living rooms. Hmm. So we didn't have any overhead. Like we didn't. Oh, right, right. You didn't have to store blanks. Yeah, there, right. was, there was five of us. We were printing the shirts. We were selling the shirts. We were doing the, the marketing, the finance, every part of it. So especially in 2008, when the economy tanked, we were only five years in, but we didn't have any overhead. So yes. even though sales right. declined, we hadn't, there was, we were able to survive it pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Did you guys have to get jobs or anything? Or you could just hang it out and still stick oh it out God. there? I, what are we, 21, <laughs> we're 21 years in now. I, I stopped bartending like seven years ago, I think. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Interesting. We would just keep putting, keeping the money in the company, keep growing it. And, mm -hmm. and Jeremy and I would keep on bartending on the weekends or he was doing taxes for Oof. half of our community. We were working. So at one point I was working like two different bar jobs, selling awnings for a friend's family's company and, and doing jetty as much as possible. We always had other jobs until yeah. not that long ago. Wow. Good for you, man. You grinded it out. That's amazing. Yeah. It just felt like the right thing to do. It just didn't, it didn't really seem like there was any other option. <laughs> I hear you. Sometimes you get into something and it's like, it's just me. It's just us. It's just, you got to keep going forward. Move the ball forward, as they say. Think organic groceries are too expensive? So does Thrive Market. They guarantee savings on healthy groceries and home essentials delivered. How? It's easy. They work directly with the best organic brands so you get the highest quality products without the big retail markups. Shop everything from pantry essentials to sustainable meat and food to non-toxic cleaning supplies. And get 30% off your first order and a free gift when you join Thrive Market. Go to ricksays.com slash Thrive Market and get your membership today. That's ricksays.com slash Thrive Market. Now back to the show. Without giving away any secrets, what's your process for sourcing materials? Do you have someone that specifically focuses on that? Or you just guys find cool stuff you like and figure out where to get it and get it? Yeah. I mean, we have a, a product development team. It's three three people and they're doing a great job just trying to use more, more natural fibers and trying to get everything out of China that we can and diversify mm -hmm. that a lot more. And then we have our, our Oystex fabric that's made in, in Taiwan, but that's a proprietary blend of the crushed up oyster shell, calcium carbonate, and Bali. Cool. So those guys have to make that in the in the Taiwan factory. But yeah, yeah. I mean we 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 kind of shop around and and look for the right situations and go anything from there. in uh, Vietnam or Thailand. I think a little bit in Vietnam right now. No. Nothing in Thailand. Nothing in Thailand. Yeah, yeah. I think Thailand. Well, it used to be mostly f a lot of footwear. I think. I don't know what they're doing now, but um, yeah, we're hoping to move some stuff to like Mexico and, and Central America sooner yeah. than later. That's been growing a lot, and that would just be a much easier process. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any U.S. manufacturing production? We've dabbled, but and we would love to, but man, yeah. it's so hard. The the prices you have to charge. Right. Yeah. The end consumer and the retailer sees that price tag and they just are immediately yeah. scared away. Yeah. And um, then if you make the product better to warrant the price tag, it's too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. That's so tough. it's a tough one. And and I know that there's so many companies that would love to be able to, to bring manufacturing to the U.S. If, if we were able to get like a subsidy from the government or something for that, then I, I know plenty of people would sign up, but yeah. right yeah. now it's just, it's not cost effective. Yeah. Pretty tough. Yeah. That's what I read. We, we, we did a little bit of, when I was at Eagle Creek back in the day, but it was a long time ago. I mean, it was 20, 30 years ago. So it's changed a lot since then. Yeah. And how do you guys incorporate feedback from customers into the design process? You must get a lot of feedback from online sales and social media. People love your stuff. Yeah. 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 I mean, constantly taking feedback. I think the most feedback we take is from our retailers. I mean, even mm. from the very beginning, going back all the way to, to the, today, to the first year or two, those, <laughs> those couple of, those couple of shops that, that brought us in, they'd been in the industry for a while. And it was literally like asking them like, Hey, do you, what do you want next? Yeah. They would say, okay, well, I need a couple new designs and then I need a, a couple sweatshirts and a, beanie or whatever it was. And they kind of dictated what, where we should grow the product line. Hmm. And it was super helpful. And now okay. we're at a point where they don't, 
necessarily dictate that, but we're constantly asking for feedback on, okay, like what did we, is there any categories that we're missing or that we should be expanding on or something we have too much of, or just, we are always asking for feedback. Just you take it all with a grain of salt because one opinion doesn't mean anything, but. Yeah. And you got to sort through the wheat in the chat to yeah. find the good stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you have 10 people say the same thing, then, okay, maybe, maybe there's something to it. Right. Right. Um, right. And then the rep, the rep team also, it's so mm-hmm. important to listen to your, your sales team. We make yeah. so many adjustments based on insight from the sales team that are pros. Boots on the ground. Yeah. It's great feedback from yeah. these guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Can you discuss any partnerships or collaborations you have that have, that help further Jetty's mission to expand your reach? And Yeah, sure. I mean, big. Like, so we, we have a full nonprofit donated over two and a half million dollars out to the community through different initiatives. Oh, wow, that's great. Yeah. Oyster shell recycling program, different surf contests to raise money for like community members battling health issues or mm-hmm. you know, house burns down or just different community members will, will help with uh, different grants. That's great. Uh, we throw a bunch of events and we have some really cool collabs that help raise money for that. Like we have a, mm. a bourbon that we've been running with this distillery, Bluebird Distillery out in PA, Phoenixville. Mm. It's an awesome bourbon and proceeds from that go to a nonprofit. The same thing with, we have an awesome collab with Kona Big Wave Lager this whole summer running. Mm. Um, and they, they sponsored a bunch of our events to the nonprofit. We're doing a, a few t- t-shirt collabs with them. Awesome. Um, yeah. Then you can enter, you get the, the shirts and it enters you to win a boat cruise, a private boat cruise with like a small crew for a Donovan wow. Frank and Ryder private concert. Nice. Um, yes. Yeah, so we've got that one. We've got a cool one with the New Jersey devils. We did a collab, um, mm. the NHL hockey team last mm-hmm. year that was really successful. And like they sold out twice before the first period ended. Um, really? Games. Yeah, it was pretty wild. And then, so now we're, we're running that back with some new designs and then we're stepping it up a little bit and we're going to have a little s- store inside the stadium um, for a little pop-up s- shop for great a idea. week. Yeah. yeah. That's great idea. That one's cool. We got a bunch of stuff going on. That's some we cool keep, stuff going on. Yeah. That's cool. We keep, we keep very busy. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. What's the next few years look like? both in terms of product and brand, you continue to grow. I'm assuming no one, well, no one wants to stop growing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we have so much room for healthy growth. I can't hear you. We're specialty market distribution. Uh-huh. We have a really good sales team right now. And, and they're just really focusing on, on those key accounts that we still need to get into. And then, then I, then I'm going to start looking into international stuff because we haven't even, we have a little bit of Caribbean and Central America business and a decent Canada business, but that's it. We have oh, so wow, much room. Really? It's crazy. Yeah. That's a lot of opportunity out there. Yeah. 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 It's wild. And that's so, a whole nother animal. You have a lot of learning going uh-huh. on there. <laughs> yep. Yep. It really is. I just started dipping my toes in last year, went over to the ISPO show in, in Germany yeah. and I was... Yeah, there's some some great takeaways from it. I'm looking forward to exploring that more. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So what advice would you give to a young aspiring entrepreneur looking to start a business in the surf or outdoor industry? Oh, <laughs> well, at this point in time with the way technology is and social media and the way things have changed, digital marketing, there's just so many different factors. I would, I would definitely suggest focusing in on a specific product Mm. rather than like a full scope, like apparel line, like we did. We did it, but now I think there's just a lot of cool opportunity for taking like a commodity and, and putting a unique spin on it, whether it's what, like, stance did with socks or mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. sacks you know, with underwear sacks with underwear or arcade with belts or there's yeah. just uh you can take a product now that is that is quote unquote like boring or just normal put a fun spin on it in the, in the outdoor surf world and and have some have some cool success yeah yeah no, that's good advice yeah there is and there's a lot of unique opportunities still out there i think a lot of people think it's saturated boy i don't think so you go to these shows and I don't you know, think so at all. One idea I mean, after the next. 
yeah, it's really just what does, what do we all consume on a day-to-day basis that hasn't been made cool? You know what I mean? Right, it's right, like, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like staplers, scissors. I don't know. Like <laughs> just yeah, you know, look, yeah. look around. What do you use on your daily that like yeah. people aren't, haven't done something fun with yet? Right. Right. Cool or fun. Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your favorite piece of outdoor gear under a hundred dollars? Ooh, I think I'd have to say, and it, it's, it's well under a hundred bucks, but I find myself using them constantly mm-hmm. is those like night eyes S beaner clips. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Like <laughs> I have them clipped all over the place. I mean, I use them. I travel a lot. And I mean, they're clipped on my bag with my water bottle or clip. They're, if I'm, uh, any kind of adventure we're doing, those things are, yeah. I always have them inside pockets. They're so useful. That's a good um, one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. think ones come yeah. up. Yeah. Those uh, night eyes guys saying? are amazing. Those guys, man, their gadgets and stuff, they are amazing. Yeah, they really are. They they're they're pretty creative and and, and they don't stop. You go to the shows, they they got six new things. Like, how do you guys do this? It's incredible. Yep, yep. Big fan of what they're doing. I have a lot of their products, but those I think for adventure gear, I think that yeah. SB clip is is the one for me. That's a good one. We'll link to that in the show notes. How about books? Do you read a lot? Do you have a favorite book or two? I do. I I used to read a lot. I got into reading through like just fun fiction mm. uh, when I was just laid up after a surgery uh, years ago. And then I got, then I branched away from fiction and got into like economics or self-help and business and that business, kind of stuff. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, and now I've kind of mixed some fiction back in just kind of let my imagination run with things. But I think I always go back to the, uh, to Simon Sinek's uh, start yeah. with why. <laughs> yeah. That's a great one. I, I love that book. I think it's Classic. a really good I read it twice yeah. already. Yeah. Probably read it twice more. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and he just, he's just so well-spoken even yeah. some of his like, Ted talks and YouTube videos. Yeah. There's, I think my favorite fiction one would have to be this Midnight Library by Matt Haig. No, oh, I haven't heard of that one. Which has a really good life message in there that, that hmm. it's easy to pick up and take from. I think it's just a good reminder. But just not, not looking back on decisions she made and, and, and wondering about how life would have played out if you had made a different decision yeah. and that you're on the, the path you're supposed to be on. It's a, it's a pretty cool message and, and written in a really fun way. Oh, cool. I'll check that out. I firmly believe in that. Don't look back. What happened, happened. The world is a yeah. different place today. <laughs> yeah. And Whatever. then, and then my buddy Aftel who, who turned me on to the B Corp His good as the new cool book is, is a great read. That's a good one too. I just saw that one. Yeah. That's a good one too. And before we go, you have a special offer for listeners. They can go to your website and use code OUTDOORBIZ20 for 20% off. Thank you very much for that. That's very cool. Appreciate it. Got it. Yeah. Pleasure. I'm yeah. Glad, glad to help. So, yeah. You guys use a lot of cool, make a lot of cool stuff. I'll have to grab a couple of things for the cold mornings up here in Bishop. What do we have in the wintertime? <laughs> yeah. No, please. That's that's awesome. I'm I'm, I'm stoked to, uh, to offer the discount and hope that everybody takes advantage of it. Yeah, we'll get it to happen. Yeah. And if people want to follow up with you, what's the best way for them to reach out? I mean, Corey, C O R Y underscore Higgins, H I G G I N S, is my Instagram handle. Cool. And then, I mean, through the, the website or Corey, C O R Y at jettylife.com, like our website. Cool. That's my email. I mean, yeah, I'm LinkedIn, pretty, all pretty the available. Yeah. I'm pretty available. We all have to be on all the places these days, right? Yes, we do. LinkedIn, I'm on. I don't know. I'm here and I got to I gotta pay more attention to that and, and post more <laughs> according to my team. Yeah, the team always wins. Well, tell them to write it and you just approve it. <laughs> That's what I keep saying. I'm trying to get someone to run all my social for me. I don't yeah. have time for this. Exactly. When you figure that out, let me know. <laughs> I know, right? They always <laughs> just laugh at me. I'm like, no, nah, I'm serious. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's been great talking to you. I hope to meet you in person one of these days at a trade show or out here in Bishop or you never know where. Yeah, me too. This is great. I really appreciate your time and having me on. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Outdoor Biz Podcast. Be sure to visit our website, theoutdoorbizpodcast.com, where you'll find show notes with links to everything we talked about and more. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss a single episode. 
And while you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or spread the word and tell a friend. That would really help us out, too. Be sure to tune in every week. And thanks again for listening to the Outdoor Biz Podcast with Rick Sayes. 